secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear Lord our Lord Jesus Christ, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, being all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace to will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, 
God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern those whom Thou dost bring up in Thy steadfast fear and love, keep us, we beseech Thee, under the protection of Thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of Thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. begin it, the 20th chapter of Deuteronomy. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses, and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid for them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh unto battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you, to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house, and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that hath, plant, that hath planted a vineyard, and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath betrothed the wife, and hath not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. And the officer shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. And it shall be, when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. Here ended the lesson. The epistle is written in the third chapter of 1 St. John, beginning at the 13th verse. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we, lo we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's, world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on this name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us the commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, as he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. 
Peter ended the epistle. Thanks be to God. St. Luke, beginning at the 16th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. They all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Praise, Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. visiting us this morning and hope you'll come back. Um, we are so pleased uh, that uh, we are all here. We have this church and we had a great uh, diocesan senate uh, the last few days down at Carefree, Arizona. 
uh, Phoenix, which began uh, Thursday, then Friday and Saturday. Uh, we uh, got back into town uh, last night and everything went beautifully. So it was our di annual diocesan synod with uh, fellow uh, clergy, laity from various churches in the, in the diocese. And it was a lot of fun and it was very, very enriching, spiritually uplifting, moving. And uh, you know, how do we know it went well? Well, when I was down there in Carefree, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix, I uh, got up to 130 degrees and then uh, my shirt melted to my skin. And then a javelina came out and bit me on the knee. And then uh, I backed into a saguaro cactus. Now, none of those things happened. So that's a good thing. We did, on the first day, on Thursday, it rained. First time it rained there in four months. So we felt like that was a sign from God, that a little blessing upon us. And then, too, uh, it was the feast of St. John the Baptist and the nativity of John the Baptist. And he was the first to herald uh, Jesus Christ as the Messiah, was he not? He did that when he was in his mother's womb, six months uh, in the womb of his mother. And when Mary arrived to share that good news of knowing she would be the Theotokos, the God-bearer of Jesus in her womb, Jesus had been conceived by the Holy Ghost in Mary's womb. And so when she went to announce that great news to, uh, to her cousin Elizabeth, uh, then the baby John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth uh, jumped for joy. So an unborn child was the first herald uh, the arrival of the incarnation of Jesus. And it was on that day, last Thursday, that we had the overthrowing, overturning of Roe versus Wade. And uh, so we have, thankfully, uh, hopefully, a return to the value and sanctity of life. But really, it begins with the knowledge of God and His love for us. That life begins at the moment of conception, and uh, it ends, of course, when we, uh, it does not end, it goes into the next, next realm. So every life is sacred. So hopefully, with that, uh, we can make inroads and continue to support uh, First Choice Pregnancy Centers here in Las Vegas and help unwed mothers, those in crisis, those who have had abortions. We can teach them and show them of God's love, His mercy, and unconditional uh, love and compassion and help uh, those in crisis. So, that being said, uh, the diocesan synod, a lot of God is busy. There's, God is moving about and something's going on with God. It's a good thing because we have uh, answers to prayer as far as having more men with a sacred ministry. We now have six postulants up to this diocese, those who study for holy orders, testing the vocation. And a seventh individual, a young man and his family, uh, will be studying under Canon Dart for a year um, for his, and as far as learning the ropes, getting to know what it means to be a priest and going about with him. So there's a lot of movement. We feel like there's God is really reaching into our hearts and giving us, lighting us anew with the fire of his love. And uh, so there are a lot of exciting things going on in the diocese. Um, also, uh, we had uh, indications uh, too that there is more kind of working together with the other Anglican jurisdictions, the ACC and United Episcopal Church as well. And kind of we see a renewal up there and uh, where there's, there's strength in numbers truly. So there's a lot of wonderful things going on. The business meeting was uneventful. Everything went great there at the Dawson business, business meeting, too. So, a lot of good things. Uh, Mike, what would you say? Any highlights you went? Um, anything you want to, anything that kind of moved you? Uh, well, well, definitely soaking the Senate in prayer at the Eucharist. Yeah. I think the way they woke that together was very meaningful for me. Yeah. And I think just being the, uh, the leadership was giving me confidence that the church is in good hands. Yeah. I didn't see any people in, in, in the clergy that gave me any concerns. Yeah. So, so yeah. I would just tell everybody that the diocese seems to be as in good hands. Yeah. And then, uh, God willing, next year there's talk about combining this diocese with the Western states, going back to a two diocesan model. Uh, the demarcation line would be the Mississippi River for the Western states and the Eastern states uh, east of the Mississippi. That will give us uh, more clergy, more laity, and coming together at the Dawson Center next year will be in Walnut Creek, California in April. So, that's good news. All right, men's cake auction for the ACW uh, last Sunday. Thank you all, all of you men who uh, helped contribute to that. Will you bake the cake or you bought one? Uh, over $600 was raised for the ACW and their efforts uh, and their charities. And 
the community and within the church. Uh, so they are, I thought a great success, so over 600. And uh, that's great. Uh, John Pelham, his requiem will be uh, July 9th, uh, 11 a.m. So uh, on a Saturday, so I hope you can come for him. He was a very devout member of this parish, a great uh, friend of the parish, and gave much uh, in the way of his talents and, and uh, love. Whether it be the website or whether it was uh, Facebook or taking pictures for uh, the history of the church, that was great too. So we will miss him. We want to give him a good send off on uh, July 9th. All right, any other announcements? We're good. Um, we also, it looks like we're going to be acquiring a church bell. Uh, so this is a, a big, uh, probably about so yay big. And uh, it is a, probably going to be given to us from Christ Anglican Church and will be brought here tomorrow. Looks like the vestry has approved it and uh, we have a donor, one who will be purchasing the bell for us. It's worth uh, probably, uh, it's, it's a high quality bell and uh, we'll probably be placing it on the roof. The request of the donor is for it to have a rope, so we'll be ringing that and we just need to mount it. So any ideas or suggestions on where to place it, how to go about doing that, but uh, we'll probably hire an architect to, uh, to put that in place, so we're excited about it. Right. You please, please stand for the hand. church year and I love this season as you see the symbol uh, for this season is green as far as the color green and it represents symbolizes growth 
we grow are to grow in the knowledge and love of God. And so these wonderful gospel readings, epistle lessons are all meant to show us uh, the heart of God and the revelation, the fullness of God through his son, Jesus Christ. So we're going to get a great smattering of uh, scripture readings, gospel readings, of miracle accounts, of his teachings, these parables, especially this morning, the parable of the Great Supper. And the one that is connected to it, too, a uh, separate parable, but very similar, and that is the, uh, the banquet, uh, the wedding feast of the king's son, which some commentators believe are really the same parable, the one and the same. But in fact, they are very different. You have our... They are spread apart, and they both convey the same meaning. The second one of the king's son in Matthew's account of the king's the wedding feast of the king's son is a much more strident and one to emphasize that where is your allegiance? Is it with God, or is it with lesser things? And that is the lesson we can learn from this parable of the Great Supper. For as C.S. Lewis said, you know, it's not that humankind's desires are too great, but that they are so little, that they're less than they should be. We are willing to settle for less rather than to aspire to and reach for greater things in this life. And so we see that on display in this parable. Those who made excuse to this great supper that they were invited to, the invitations have been sent out. And isn't it the case when you receive an invitation to maybe a wedding or to uh, some great party of your friend who wants to throw it for a great occasion they're having in their life to mark a great event in their lives. And we say, sure, I'll come. And it's three or four months out in advance. Sure, no problem, I'll be there. And then as it draws closer, we realize, and then the day arrives, okay, come to the party, we're all ready for you. And then you say, oh my gosh, but I have all these other things going on. I don't, and then you begin to hem and haw. And then you say, I don't know that I can go but you realize you should go, you must go, because you want to honor and support your friends and to share in the joy of this occasion. And so that's what we have here. We have those who were willing to, no, nope, I'm not going to you know, give up and, and sacrifice the things that I want to be about right now in my life to help you or to share the great joy of this event that's happening. And so Jesus is telling that his crowd, it was the Pharisees, of his day, uh, self-righteous clergymen, the Jewish Pharisees, who really represented, uh, you know, the nation, the, the church at that time, and they had it in for Jesus. Maybe it was a little subtle to begin with in his ministry, and they, okay, we don't know about this guy. We don't like him. We see him as a threat. Let's get rid of him. And that was the case going back all the way in the Old Testament times, where the chosen people would stone the prophets, they would kill them, and would rather be about their own way, their own will, rather than heeding the will of God. And so towards the end of our Lord's ministry, it was the Tuesday prior to his crucifixion, that you have this second parable, and that was very similar to this first one, and that is the king's uh, son, the great wedding feast. He invites everybody, you know, those who are invited to the wedding feast. He says, come, everything is ready now. Not only did they uh, say no, but they slew the servants that the king sent out, and they also slew the king's son. And so therefore, it was, you know, Jesus is saying, okay, I know you have it in for me. You're going, you want to kill me. You're going to murder me. Careful what you do here, because your heart is so set against me now that you're really closing the doors to experiencing the kingdom of heaven and heaven itself. So each of us has a choice. We can continue on the path toward God, or we can continue on the path away from God. Thy will be done, or my will be done. We can settle for lesser things and want things our way throughout life, and we will discover that those things that we chased after, eventually they will be taken from us. Because the only thing that you can take with you in this life into the next is what? Faith, being right with God, charity, and also that fourth thing, virtue character matters to God. So if we are into the things of God to love our neighbor and to love him, then we carry that into the next life. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so it is a choice. So those who rejected going to the banquet, the great supper, the wedding feast, what did they miss out on? God himself, Jesus himself. All the things, the greater things that we should be about and yet we, as in our human fallenness and brokenness, our selfishness, our disobedience and defiance, 
we are willing to settle for lesser things which will eventually fill us or will leave us empty and apart from God and his kingdom. So the great lesson is if we continue on the path of acquiring virtue, of loving our neighbor, of doing those things God would have us do, there will come those times when much will be expected to us and say, okay, you've been baptized, I sent out the invitation, now you are called to live the life I have called you to live and to sacrifice much for my name's sake. There may be those times in your life will say, okay, my, my mother is very sick, I must leave my job and go tend to her. Or I must deny that promotion that I, I would like to take, but my son or my daughter needs me right now, or my wife. So there will be times when we are called to sacrifice much for those God puts in our path, which really, when we do it to the least of these, we have done it unto Him. But in so doing, we gain something much by carrying our cross. We draw closer to God, but also we begin to experience His kingdom and to be filled with that void which only He can fill, and it is, it is Jesus Himself. So that is how we experience the kingdom. That is how we usher in uh, it, you know, the kingdom here on earth. When we obey His will, yield to Him, then we experience that purpose and that joy. Also, those things we may be called upon to do and to say no to may be vice in our life. There may be something you've been uh, leaning on to try to medicate your pain or to fill a void in you through pain that you're experiencing. It could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be fame or fortune. These things which you're leaning on, you trust in to give you fulfillment and you're not willing to let go and trust in God and say, God, this thing is going to get the better of me. I have to make a choice. Am I going to continue down this road and have it destroy me? Or am I going to surrender all and trust in you that you will be able to help me through this to draw upon you through which I can carry myself through with your help, leaning on you, surrendering all, and trust that you have something better for me. And there you go. And so if we can do that at those moments, then we are accepting that invitation. We are receiving Jesus. And you will be blessed. Through that crucible experience, you will come to know him more and more as Lord and Savior. So that is the point of the parable. May we all uh, take it to heart and live it out, both now and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. While we have time, let us do good unto all men, and especially unto them that are of the household.
the soy sacrifice is offered to the greater glory of God and thanksgiving for what was very much in evidence at the diocesan synod uh, this last weekend, and that is a renewal, a revival of the church since the pandemic. It is happening, and it is in evidence in many ways, especially as we are uh, those being called to the sacred ministry. We're so grateful for that, and just uh, the spirit of, of conviviality, charity among the members was awesome to see. A lot of good things are going on, so you will be seeing those. We also have those in the parish uh, newsletter as far as uh, the addresses given by Bishop Hansen, also Ken Dart, his address as well, and then uh, from also the diocesan newsletter, which will be coming out fairly soon. Um, I ask your prayers for John Upham, our Archbishop, and uh, he has had uh, cancer. It is in remission following two surgeries, but he is in weakness of body. And so he's been given the rest of this year off so that he might recover and renew himself. There is a goodwill card out there, which the, those in attendance at the Senate sign. So if you'd be so kind to sign that for him. Uh, there is a second card there if you run out of room. <laughs> you can sign that as well. Um, also, please keep uh, Vincent and Sharina in your prayers as they have COVID. Also, uh, Dan and Jamie Coppola have COVID as well. So coming through that, we pray for them at this time. Uh, finally, uh, we give thanks to God for this Tuesday will be the 25th anniversary of my ordination to the sacred ministry as priest. And uh, we pray that uh, there will be 25 more years plus uh, that I might be of service to Christ and his flock. And thank you for all your prayers, your support, encouragement. It could not be done. Usually the average well, a tenure for a clergyman is about 12 years. So it was by the grace of God that I'm still here. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart to do reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble. Sorry. Need. Sickness. Or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life from thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, without leaving the end. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness. 
which we from time to time most fiercely have committed, thy power for your dignity against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly our wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Their remembrance of them is to be responsible. The burden of them is powerful. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness to bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ hath unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that tread veil and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord, the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me and right so true. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, O oh, oh, oh. Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. 
For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify for thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son jesus christ and through faith in his blood we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and make one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy to our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, we beseech thee, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of the blessed, glorious, and ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with that of thy blessed apostles, Peter, and Paul, and Andrew, and all thy saints, favorably grant peace in our time, that by the help of thy mercy, we may ever be kept free from sin, and safe from all disquietude. 
the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth God, world without end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. In the Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy, that thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
of the living God, we most heartily thank thee for the thoughts God saved to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and just assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Depart in peace. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Who 